now I'd like to uh, introduce our speaker, uh, Mr. Andrew Liu. Andrew is a vehicle validation specialist for BMW manufacturing in South Carolina. Since he graduated from the Cooper Union and uh, Clemson University, he has worked at BMW as a project planner, quality engineer, and a vehicle uh, integrator. So today we are glad to have Andrew here to share his experience in auto industry and talk about how he got there. Now, without further ado, I'll turn the floor over to Andrew. Hi everyone, as you said, um, thank you Yi, my name is Andrew. Um, I am currently a vehicle validation specialist at BMW Manufacturing. Um, I work at the plant in Spartanburg, South Carolina, where we produce our SUVs, we call them SAVs. We produce the X3, the X4, the X5, X6, and X7 models for the world. We market to all different countries. About 70% of our uh, manufactured goods are exported. We only import about 30%. And we um, custom order, we do custom orders for all these different cars. So we're really proud and really excited about what we do. So a little bit of background about me. Um, I am originally from New Hyde Park. I went to Great Neck South High School. I knew I wanted to be an engineer. I always liked cars. I liked BMWs, of course. Um, so when I decided to pick my major for college, I did my undergraduate in mechanical engineering. So I went to the Cooper Union. And so for those of you who do not know what the Cooper Union is, because I understand it's a very small school. It is a engineering school in the Lower East Side of Manhattan that specializes in mechanical, civil, um, chemical, and electrical engineering. They also have art and architecture, which they're also very famous for. So I spent four years there doing mechanical engineering where I took many different courses, including systems engineering, thermodynamics, um, multiple physics classes, um, mechanics, and some project building classes. And after that, I decided um, you know, undergraduate in college, that's all great. There's a lot of fun and you do get to learn a lot, but a lot of it is theory and a lot of it is in classrooms. So it's nice to kind of apply what you've learned to what you do for your living, to for your job. So I decided to go and pursue a master's degree because I knew I liked BMW. Um, I searched around for schools and the Clemson University in South Carolina they have a very good program, a very good master's program for automotive engineering. It is at the Clemson University International Center for Automotive Research, also abbreviated as CUICAR. That is the name of their campus and their program. It is a two-year master's automotive engineering program where they teach you about all different kinds of things in the automotive industry. They also have very close ties with BMW. Um, of course, it's about a 20-minute drive up the road. So we, they often have interns and co-ops from CUI car go and work at BMW and eventually become full-time employees. So I decided to pursue that degree at that school and I had an amazing time. I've learned so much. Um, doing your master's degree um, really gives you a different perspective. I've taken different classes I didn't even know existed there. Um, one of my favorites was project management. So I spent four years at the Cooper Union as a mechanical engineer doing equations and solving problems, um, sometimes down in the shop, but managing projects was never really taught there. And that was something that CUI car really focused on. Um, they have a lot of great programs inside the classroom and outside if you wish to take them that really teach you how to work with people, work on teams and manage your projects so that it winds up successful in the end. That includes all logistics, all planning, all your, um, presentations that come out of it, they teach you how to do all of it. So um, in the middle of my uh, master's um, degree program at CUI car, I applied for a fellowship with BMW. So the fellowship would basically guarantee that you have a co-op experience with BMW at the plant in South Carolina. And I was fortunate enough to um, be uh, offered the fellowship so I gladly accepted. It was what exactly wanted to what I wanted to do my entire life, and um, I started my first rotation that following summer. 
and it was very eye-opening. You know, the company is a great company, but you, you learn a lot about cars that you didn't necessarily know. As a consumer, I saw BMWs one way and they're great vehicles. I love them so much. I know them. I thought I knew them inside and out. Then you, I found myself at the factory working on the cars, actually you know, taking apart cars and it's no longer just looking at them from the outside and seeing what, you know, what color it is and what options it has. Now it's about how do I fix this part? How do I make it go onto the car properly? So a lot of work with tools, a lot of work with um, the engineers there. And I've done that, I think, for about seven months. And within those seven months, I was offered a position in a rotational program at BMW. The rotational program is, it used to be called something, but now it's called PACE. It stands for Professional Accelerated Cross-Functional Experience. It is a two-year, three-rotation program. Each rotation is eight months, and I highly recommend it. Um, our plant is very big. The plant Spartanburg at BMW has a lot of the different functions you can do. You can do engineering. You can do logistics. You can do finance. You can do human resources. There's a lot of different opportunities you can have here. And the purpose of this PACE program is to send you through these three rotations, showing you all around the plant, all the different jobs that people do, so you have exposure and you kind of bring all that experience with you from far sides of the plant together at the end. At the end, you are guaranteed a full-time position. You are considered full-time while you're in the two-year PACE program, but after that, you are placed permanently into a job card that allows you to work directly for BMW. And it's a, like I said, it's a great program. I've met so many different people there and I would not have traded it for anything else. I learned a lot at this company um, that you don't really learn in school. And there's a lot of um, dealing with people. Of course, you're dealing with your projects and your daily work, you know, trying to figure out and solve engineering problems but there's also working with people. Thankfully, ICAR has prepared me for that, but working in teams, coming across conflict, how you solve problems, it's all gonna tie together and it's all really good to have as um, a personality skill set. Um, so that's a quick intro. Oh, well, I should also mention my current job, of course. Um, currently, I am a vehicle validation specialist, so I am responsible for um, certain parts of a car and on certain cars. And my job is to make sure that everything in that part of the car functions normally. So that means playing with the cars, driving the cars back to back, tearing it apart, putting it, putting um, uh, metrolog metrological measurements on it, um, reordering parts, retrofitting parts, anything you can think of. I have to figure out why this part isn't functioning the way it should and how I can get it to function the way it should. As an engineer, you also have to think about, especially in the automotive industry, when you have a solution, how do you make this solution effective? And how do you make the solution sustainable? Because you can have a really good solution that let's say solves your problem. Everything you didn't want to happen is all gone and this part and car is now perfectly okay. But it takes, a person on the assembly line three minutes to do. They have to, they have to use three minutes to, uh, and install this part. Our assembly line, we only have 90 seconds for this person to put the part on the car. And they're not just putting one part in the car. They're probably putting anywhere between six and 12 parts in the car. So having three minutes is not an option. So it's effective, but it's not sustainable. Granted, also, if you have something su sustainable, it might not also be effective. So you have to make sure that your solution has both aspects covered. You also have to think about how much it costs, of course. In the end, this is a business. And in the automotive industry, it's all about cost. It's all about maximizing your efficiency and making sure that you minimize your costs while doing so. Um, that happens a lot in our plant. And we are always looking for opportunities to improve our line, improve our product, so that we still deliver the maximum amount of quality to our customer while still making sure that we um, remain within budget. 
Um, I also have another uh, role at my job and it's called a squeak and rattle analyst. So when you buy a car, you don't expect it to have like creaking noises or buzzing noises. When you're driving, it should be completely quiet. It doesn't matter what road it's on. You can be on a smooth highway or you can be on the mess that is the Grand Central Parkway. It doesn't really matter. Anything, any kind of road surfaces, off-road, on-road, the car has to be quiet. So my job is to drive the car and listen for any of these noises. And if the noises are heard, if I find that something is buzzing or ticking, I then take the car apart and do um, a deep dive analysis on it to really understand what is causing it. You can either have it be the part itself, maybe the part is just not good. A lot of our parts, we do not make ourselves. We have contract suppliers who make the parts for their own business. And then we purchase these parts on contract and then put them in the car. So it sometimes it might be a problem with the part. Sometimes when it was installed on the line, it wasn't done so properly. Or sometimes just the design of the car is not robust enough. It's the, it, the design does not stand up to our expectations and is therefore causing a lot of failures. So we have to do the analysis and figure out which one of those it is and then feed that back to the appropriate people who can then get the problem solved um, and all the logistics taken care of. Um, I know there's a lot more to say, but I would really like to see if anyone has any questions thus far. Hopefully, um, I was hoping that maybe some of these questions would um, be good conversation starters as well. So I'm open to anything you guys have to ask. Favorite BMW model, past or present? I don't really have one. I probably have like 15. Um, I would like to have a 2003 330i ZHP sedan. So a three series four door sedan from 2003. If I had to pick one car only, I would probably go with that. Those cars are very solid. And that's a, a, that's a lot of a reason why I got into BMW. Um, my parents have had BMWs and um, despite the fact that they can't maintain cars, they don't know how, um, and they think oil changes should be done once every seven years. Um, these cars have lasted a long time. I still have my original 2004 BMW and it's still running great. Um, they're really well built. You can't tell that these cars are like 15, 18 years old. They age so well. The quality is really there. They really care about it. Um, Structurally, they're great. We were unfortunate to have an accident in our family, but it was with our BMW, which wound up saving us. Um, there is a lot of different aspects of it. Of course, driving dynamics, they're absolutely uh, like 100% just great driving cars, especially the earlier ones. We still have very great driving cars now. However, with our market, of course, we tune our cars for luxury. Um, you, if you want something that is fun to drive, you buy an M model or an M performance model, but our standard base models are um, for the everyday consumer. So just to comfortably get everyone from point A to point B with a little bit of fun sprinkled in as well. My favorite part of my job right now is knowing that we're giving the customer a perfect product. A lot of it, you know, all of what we do is for the customer. We wouldn't be here if people weren't buying our cars. And when they buy our cars, we expect them, they expect us to deliver the best product that we can. And all the work that we do is we spend so many hours and hours on chasing the smallest things. <clears throat> Some of the, the topics we work on, the customer might not even notice, but we want to make sure that we are giving them the best possible item we can deliver. So we will do whatever it takes. I love seeing our cars on the road. Um, we are our BMW groups networks. We have a lot of factories. So we have our factory, of course, here in South Carolina. We have several spread out throughout Germany. 
We have um, one in South Africa, we have some in China. So we are a global network. Um, our plant produces the most volume. So we make the most cars for the world. We produce about 400 to 450,000 cars a year. And of course, with our current market, many people like SUVs. They like bigger cars. They just want something to have a lot of space and a lot of room for cargo, kids, whatever it is. So we, our vehicles sell very well. So we get to see our cars a lot on the road and it, it, we, we feel a sense of pride. And I'm very happy to be a part of that just to see when an X3 or an X5 drives down the road, it's like, oh, it's been through our doors before. Chances are I've probably taken the, the, the car apart to look at something. It's a very satisfying feeling to know that people are enjoying what you put your work into. So in high school, I tried to find courses that pertain to the automotive industry very relevant courses. Uh, one of ours was Know Your Car. Uh, we did have an auto shop in our high school with um, but the jacks and the lifts and everything, all the tools we would need. And our teacher would show us how to basically work on your car. So you get to see a little bit of the car in a different light, not just being in the driver's or the passenger seat, you get to be underneath the car or under the engine. Um, so uh, knowing where you want to go in the automotive industry is a very important thing. Um, it is a little difficult to do early on in your career, um, especially in high school. I know a lot of times you don't really know what you wanna do, but just having a curiosity and just poking around um, really goes a long way. Even if you have your own car in high school, just taking a look at it yourself, working on it, changing your own oil, you know, taking parts apart, um, modifying your car, anything, working with tools, it, it really does go a long way, especially in an assembly environment, which um, this BMW plant in South Carolina is. Um, we value that a lot. We really would love to see um, co-ops and interns who come through who have the mechanical experience, who've worked on, it could be their car, it could be the lawnmower, it could be anything, any, building furniture, just so that we know that they can Put things together. They understand how pieces are assembled. They have a spatial way of thinking, um, and they know how to um, get things to work. There were summer programs. Um, the summers are a very good time to utilize in terms of career acceleration. Because in the summer, that's when you have the most downtime and it's always great to go out, have fun with your friends, but there, it, it really does benefit if you take a look at different activities that you can do to better your career. So as far as engineering and the automotive industry, I have participated in some programs. I've done design programs because I'm also into transportation design. I've done those in Michigan. So I actually flew to Michigan for three summers in a row and um, design cars. And I actually did get some um, scholarships out of it, thankfully, but unfortunately I wasn't able to use them. Um, I also went to Germany a few times because they have great engineering programs over there. Um, they of course think differently than we do in the US. So it's really nice to see how they interpret all the mechanics and um, how cars go together and how things are just designed for the future. Um, I've spent some time in um, transmission shops too, just to witness how um, cars are being repaired and how they're being put together. So just finding any kind of opportunity um, whenever you have downtime. And again, summer is a really great time to do it. Um, being able to capitalize on that and use that time effectively really goes a long way for your career. Most of the summer programs were during high school, some were in middle school as well. So a lot of it was during those times. There were a couple of programs I did while I was in college. Um, I believe I went to Germany once when I was in college, but all my design programs and my two other times in Germany were done um, during high school. Of course, math and science are very important, physics, thermodynamics, 
but it also depends on where in the automotive industry you want to work. As I've mentioned before, there's a very wide array, um, array of different jobs you can do here, um, and they're all in the automotive industry. So if you want to be an engineer, you can do industrial engineering. You can do chemical engineering. We produce hybrid batteries here, so that chemical engineering does go a long way. Mechanical engineering is by far the most popular. Um, a lot of our co-ops and a lot of our current specialists have mechanical engineering backgrounds. Um, but if you want to go into logistics, you can use your industrial engineering degree. Or if you want to do finance, you can use your business degree or you can go get an MBA. There are many different paths you can take. So there's not one defined path of, okay, I have to do engineering um, with building projects and just understanding of mechanicals. And that is the only way I can get into the automotive industry. That is not absolutely not true. There's a lot of different ways you can enter and find yourself in one of these big automotive companies. Well, like I said, our BMW Pays program, we do hire um, engineering students. We also have finance students, human resource students. Um, I believe we've even had like literature majors, just a, a whole different array of people have come through and have really enjoyed their time working in the plant. Um, so there isn't one specific thing that I would recommend focusing on. So for the, the guys, you guys on the line, um, if you have certain backgrounds or career paths or um, majors for your college that you're looking at, I'd be more than happy to give you some advice of where that might lead you or where, what you can do with that for the automotive industry. Um, we actually do have um, plenty of co-op and internship opportunities. And again, all different fields of our plants. Some of our co-ops are currently working in our talent programs plant, um, sorry, talent programs division. Um, we have co-ops in my department working with the vehicles doing analysis on them. We have co-ops doing um, assembly rotations. So they'll be on the line um, trying to figure out the problems that happen out there. Um, we hire, I believe three times a year and the job postings do go out. They're available on our BMW intranet site. And um, we always welcome people to apply. We always want to get new talent in and really foster that. And we want to develop these co-ops. These aren't people we want to just hire and say, okay, here's some busy work, you know, go make these copies or something. No, we want to be able to set them up in the right career path to make sure that they're going to become good, um, valuable additions to the automotive industry, particularly our company, because we have at that point invested in you. We hope that you would want to stick with our company. There is, it's a big question mark. There, of course, we've seen um, what we call market disruptors like Tesla. So, you know, in 2008, Tesla was barely known as a company. No one knew their products. They only had one product and the car cost so much. It was so unreliable. No one even would dare to buy it unless you were a very wealthy collector. But now you see Tesla and there's such a large scale manufacturer producing so many cars and you see them all over the place on the road. And they're definitely competitors. We definitely take them very seriously and um, really treat them as same level competitors. So it, it, I wouldn't say that automotive vehicles would be completely autonomous like Tesla is trying to push, but there's definitely a big lean towards it. It depends on the market. So. A lot of customers um, just want to get places. A lot of customers also want a driving experience. Um, but it just seems to me that a lot of where the automotive industry and the market is going, it's leaning towards more um, progressive thinking, which includes ride sharing and um, some semi-autonomous or fully autonomous vehicles. Um, there's, that's going to be a majority of it. A lot of um, the departments here at our plant BMW, we also focus on driving assistance systems. Um, and it's definitely something that we don't neglect. So all adaptive cruise control, lane departure warning, um, steering assist, lane keep assist, um, self-parking. Those are all um, things that we have special departments for that we do look at here 
because we know that people are going to wind up relying on them probably in five to 10 years. And we need to make sure that our systems are robust enough to handle it. You don't necessarily need to have access to a shop. If you go online, you can look and see, um, and they have all these tools you can purchase. Um, my favorite tool, because I work on interiors of cars at my job, um, so my favorite tool is a trim tool. So it's basically a very thin, hard plastic tool that you can use to pry pieces off. I um, mean, it's very durable. And the way that these parts go on cars, you'd think they'll break if you try to give them a lot of force, but they really won't. So this flat tool, you just jam it in between two parts and like pry everything off. So um, it's very easy to use and you can easily pick one up and I would just start playing with their car, taking simple things, start with simple things of car. So um, your door panel, um, looking at the door, like the inside where your, your pull handles and your window switches are, um, they're a lot simpler than you think. You can actually take those off pretty easily. So maybe just mess around. Um, also watching a lot of YouTube videos, I found that very helpful um, and looking at forums. So because I'm a BMW enthusiast, I look at a lot of BMW forums. I just purchased an old BMW too. So I'm always looking to see how I can fix it because it keeps breaking. It's the old BMW, of course, it's gonna happen. Um, I still enjoy it, it's still a great car, but it, I think that's a great way to learn just having a car on hand just to really understand it. You don't have to go to a shop. You don't have to have a shop. That's a, a, a lot of people, a lot of co-ops we've seen actually, we just finished a, 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 a hiring round. They've had experience with cars, but they've never been to a mechanic shop. Everything they've done is in their driveway with friends, um, just playing with their car, just taking stuff apart and putting it back together. It's a really good way to learn how the car is assembled and how everything kind of meshes with each other. Um, and you really don't need a shop for that. There's so many YouTube videos out there you can watch on anything from removing um, your door panel or removing an entire interior to a car or doing powertrain repairs or retrofits. Um, lots of DIY do-it-yourselves. The first thing I always tell people is, um, what are they looking for in a car? And when I say what are they looking for, I really mean, why do you need this car? Why do you use the car? What is your purpose? Do you just need it for weekend trips? Do you need it to get um, to work every day? Do you just want a car to have for fun? Um, there's a lot of different factors in buying a car. Then of course you have to consider cost and cost is a lot. There's a lot to a cost. It's not just the price tag of a car. You have to consider your maintenance cost, what kind of car it is, um, how often do you think it'll have to be maintained? But then you also weigh that with how much you're going to enjoy the car. So not to sound like I'm biased, but I guess I kind of am. Um, when you are purchasing a BMW, you are signing up for more maintenance costs and you are going to expect to be in the repair shop maybe a few more times than the norm and your repair bills are going to be higher. But every single day when you drive your car, you're going to enjoy it a lot more because it's a lot better engineered and designed to be more comfortable, more fun to drive, um, and just an overall great, great car versus something like a Toyota. And Toyota has really come a long way. They're making very, very good cars nowadays. However, there, you can still feel the difference when you drive a Toyota and let's say a BMW or a Porsche back to back. It, it's a world of a difference. So definitely value how you wanna feel when you drive your car. Um, don't just always look at the price tag. And um, I wanted, like I said before, um, I wanted the ZHP Performance Package 3 Series. Um, couldn't find one in price range, so I purchased a 2002 330i. So also a, a 3 Series sedan, just didn't have that performance package. But it has a five-speed manual, which is a saving grace. Thank you so much for having me. And to everyone on the line, um, if you do have any other questions, feel free to reach out to the library, um, and I would be more than willing to share my contact information. You can always just ask me. If anything pops up, anything comes to mind, definitely let me know. I'd be happy to answer anything I can. Thank you.